Most of us can probably relate to seeing photos of celebrities or influencers wearing what seems like such a basic outfit and they look amazing. They somehow managed to pull something that is so basic and boring into this like effortlessly chic look. And then we put that same thing on and we're like, I'm a potato. And next thing you know, we've convinced ourselves that there's an entire style of clothing that we just can't wear. Basics look great on other people, but I just look frumpy and boring in them. People will say things like, well, yeah, of course she can wear that. She's gorgeous. She's five foot 10. She's a size zero. She could wear anything and it would look great. And while I'm not disputing that that is true. There's absolutely sort of that supermodel aesthetic that means that you can pretty much wear anything and it's going to look good on you. That is part of the story, but it is not the whole story. I'm going to explain to you why most women, like nine out of 10 women say that they look bad in basics and what to do to fix that. Looking good in a basic everyday outfit is not a privilege of the elite 1% that was born with a supermodel body type. And before before we go a whole lot further, there is one critical thing that you actually really do need to know, and that is your body type. Many women get body typed wrong. They get told from a young age they're a certain body type, and then that just kind of sticks with them the rest of their life, or they think that just based on something they see in the mirror, or they think, well, I kind of look like that person, so this must be my body type it's easy to mistype ourselves. All of this is gonna be a whole lot easier for you if you actually know your true body type. So if you're not sure, or if you just wanna double check that you're right, head down to the description box because I do have a free workbook for you that's going to help you figure out your body type once and for all so that you can know and it's gonna help you make better decisions on what to purchase, what to pass, what trends will work for you, what won't, what cuts, what styles, all of that is very often based on our body type and you've got to be solid in that you know what yours is. So the number one thing stops women from feeling good in basics and they feel more frumpy and ill is ill-fitting clothing. Now we've talked about this before, oversized can sometimes be a problem but also not. Oversized is something that is absolutely a look. It's actually a look I embrace very often. But when we talk about ill-fitting clothing, what I mean is clothing that is not well balanced. You can absolutely wear oversized things. You know, wearing something that is too small for you is often going to be a problem because, well, we're going to end up looking and feeling like a bust a can of biscuits. So wearing something too small is just as much of a visual problem as wearing something that is way too big. Very much a different story when we're talking about intentionally wearing something oversized versus just constantly buying things that are too big for you, not wearing your proper size and something that is supposed to fit properly. There's a couple of things that you should know too when it comes to finding clothing that fits you properly. If you know your body type and if you know what kind of clothing looks best on you, it's going to make you a more discerning shopper. It's going to make it a lot easier for you to pass on things that you see because you just know you'll have like sort of this mental checklist and you'll be able to say, no, that's not going to look good on me because it's not made for a body type like mine. So I'm going to pass on that. Certain stores fit certain body types better. Certain clothes clothing brands are made with a certain body type in mind, whether it be a more athletic fit, whether it be a more petite overall kind of fit. It really depends store by store. So if you can kind of make yourself aware of what a store or brand tends to do in terms of making their clothing for what body type. And if you're not sure, always a quick Google, um, looking around a little bit on Reddit forums and stuff. There's so many people who spend a lot of time diving into this stuff and trying to understand it both to help themselves, but also to help other people. So no need to go out and do all the legwork yourself. You can find that information online. I'll also put in the description box a list for you so you can kind of see some of my clothing store recommendations based on body type so that you kind of know what their clothing is more geared toward. It'll help you, again, just to know that like, hey, maybe I don't have to write off that store entirely, but I should know going in that their clothing is really cut more for this body type, not mine. So I'm gonna have to be very careful about what I choose to buy from there, if anything. And of course it should go without saying that trying on things before you buy them is always a great idea. I am so guilty of being too lazy 
to do that, but it can make such a huge difference, especially if you know that you're too lazy to make the returns. What I try to do is have a little pile. If I'm ordering online, I try to have a little pile where stuff comes in and it doesn't leave that little area until I have tried it on. And what I like to do is to ensure that kind of like you should never go grocery shopping hungry. You should never try on clothes when you're having a like ugh day. When you're having a day where you feel bad about yourself or you feel just kind of bloated and icky, that is not the day to be trying on clothing. Just wait till you're in a good mood. You're feeling a little bit better, a little bit better about yourself, not feeling bloated or icky or whatever, and then try things on. We know our body type. We're making sure that we're choosing basics and clothing that are going to flatter that body type. The other thing that women often do, and again, I say this, I'm just as guilty of doing this as anybody else, but when we put on this very basic outfit and we still feel kind of like, ugh, we look in the mirror, we feel old, we feel tired, we feel all of these things. We overcompensate with too much makeup to try to make the outfit pop. It's probably a, a little ironic of me that I'm wearing such a dark lipstick, a little more makeup than usual in making this video and saying it, but it's fall and I'm feeling my fall vibes with my velvet pants and I really wanted to wear this lipstick. So just know the irony of that statement is not lost on me. We feel like we look old, tired, so we cake ourselves up with way too much makeup. And that is, again, going to age us, number one. And number two, it's not going to help the problem. <laughs> if there was one thing that I feel like I could encourage all women is that makeup is wonderful. I love makeup. I've loved it since I was probably 12 or 13 years old. This obviously is not coming from someone who hates makeup, but we have to focus on skincare, taking better care of our skin, not trying to cover things up, cover up problems with makeup. Now, obviously sometimes we need even a more immediate solution. We're getting dressed and we're not feeling great and we're tempted to overcompensate with makeup. There are a few little tips and tricks and things that you can do to try to make yourself look a little bit more awake, alive, that don't require you to cake on a bunch of makeup. One of them is, and this is something I use very sparingly, are the red eye reducing eye drops. My mom actually talked to her eye doctor about this recently, are these okay? And he just told her that use them sparingly. It's not something you should use every day. And it's something that, again, I really reserve for maybe if I'm filming and I feel like I'm just looking a little buff or pictures or something like that. I don't use them every day, but when I do, it definitely like wakes up my eyes and makes me feel a little more whoop, perky. All right. The second thing is that morning I, when you wash your face, I want you to dunk your face in ice cold water. This is a trick from the bombshells of the past who gave us a many great beauty tips. This is really going to help to just kind of like tighten up, help your face to not feel so like swollen and puffy. But one of my other favorite tips and tricks, favorite tools to use. And I've been sharing with you guys about the Bloomine Face Pro for almost a year now. And every time I share this tool with you guys, you sell it out. Now they have actually created the Bloomine Face Pro 2.0, which I was so excited to get and try because I love the original. So whenever they're like, we're going to make that even better, I'm like, yes, sweet. I'm there. Give it to me. This is one of my favorite tools for an immediate result. When I am feeling just kind of ugh, and I want an immediate result, this is what I grab every time. If you want to lift the neck, the jowls, the cheeks, all of it, bring it all a little bit up, a little higher, a little tighter. This is the tool that will do that. It uses microcurrent to help reduce a double chin, jowls, wrinkles, tightens your skin. Um, it decreases any puffiness that you have and it improves your product penetration. So all of those gorgeous skincare products you spend good money on, this is going to help improve the penetration of those into your skin. This is the big sister, the revved up version of the original original Bloomine Face Pro. This is the new one, the 2.0. It's going to improve skin tightness, reduce that puffiness even better than the original version. I love that there is warmth on the anti-aging setting. So that's going to really help improve blood flow and bringing oxygen to your skin, which in turn helps with collagen production and reducing the appearance of wrinkles. It's so easy to use three minutes, three times a week, but I just love that even if I am a little bit behind, I forget to use it or something, I can grab it anytime and get an immediate immediate result. And if you're like me and you're already shopping for Christmas, I think this would make a great Christmas gift for a woman in your life who would appreciate it. And of course, as always, I never like to share something like this that I love without getting a discount for you guys. And Bloomine gave me a big
big discount for y'all. This product is normally $300 with the link in my description box. It's $150. However, for the first 100 people, if you use my code Angela, that's going to get you an additional $50 off, making it over $200 off. That code is for the first 100 people. And I so appreciate you guys trusting me and trusting my recommendations. So you're gonna get a great deal on this tool. If you're one of the first 100 people, we'll also get the free ebook with all the face tightening secrets. And of course, my very favorite part, which I should not have saved for last, because to me, it's the most important thing. And that is that if you do not love this, you can get your full money back. You can get a full refund. I love a brand that stands behind their product. I know you're going to love this, but if you don't, you can absolutely get your money back. To me, that's no risk in giving this a try. I hope that you will. I'm so excited about the new jazzed up version, the 2.0 that is even better. It's a product I've loved for a year now, and I know you're going to love it too. Not to mention, it's going to help us on days when we feel like very tempted to cake on the makeup to cover up all the other stuff that's going on. We don't have to do that. We're going to use our Blooming Face Pro. We're going to use our good skin care. We're going to use a little bit of eye awakening eye drop, a little bit of under eye corrector, and not try to overcompensate with too much makeup. One of the biggest issues when it comes to basics and why we feel kind of just ugh in them is that very often basics will pull visually very masculine. When you really get down to it, men wear most of the time a lot of like jeans, t-shirts, shorts, sort of a very masculine look, especially just certain styles. There's just a lot about basics that tend to pull very masculine. The cut of the garment, the shape of it, sometimes even the color colors, it does pull more masculine. So I believe that's why one of the biggest things that you can do to sort of level up your basics and not feel so frumpy in them is to accessorize them. And we got this from Steel Magnolias and them ladies were right. They were spot on. The only thing that separates us from animals is our ability to accessorize. Spot on. There's a lot of uh, good life lessons to be learned from that movie. I know that like a ton of jewelry and stuff isn't everybody's game and that's not what I'm suggesting that you do. However, I do think that thinking about accessories is a really important piece to taking our basics from feeling so masculine to feeling more feminine. That can be done in a number of ways. One, obviously, is through jewelry, adding things like a, a dainty necklace, maybe some a little bit more jazzed up earrings. I love to wear, for example, hoop earrings when I'm wearing like a baseball cap and I like to wear my hair back a little bit so you can see those hoop earrings. It feminizes what is otherwise a more masculine wardrobe item. It's not just jewelry though. We can also do this with necklines. Think about the various necklines that you're wearing. Sometimes necklines like this that are just more of like a crew cut neckline can have more of a masculine feel. Obviously I'm balancing that with some oversized beaded jewelry here, but it's important to consider which necklines flatter your body type the best. Not just necklines of shirts, but also like the cut of our pants. Which cut of pants is the most flattering for your body type? I know that we all have pants that we feel more comfortable in, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna be the most flattering. So that is, in my opinion, where really the give and take comes in. If you are feeling like frumpy and ugh in this basic outfit, if you want that to change, then you have to be willing to maybe get outside of your comfort zone if you are, let's say, stuck with skinny jeans, it's the only thing that you wanna wear, but your body type is a type that would look better in a wide leg denim, that's a trade-off. You know, you have to decide. Either you're gonna keep feeling kind of stuck and just deal with it because you like how the jeans fit and feel on you, or you're gonna be willing to try a different cut or style of jean that might be a little more flattering and you won't have that same feeling of like frumpiness when you look in the mirror. And it's very hard if we've been dressing the same way for a really long time, if we've been wearing the same cuts and styles for a really long time, it can be very hard to force ourselves out of that, to go out of our comfort zone and try something new. Even if we know that it's probably going to look better, it can just be really hard because then you look in the mirror and you feel different. Obviously, adding a great handbag is another easy, simple way to kind of jazz up a basic outfit. But think about bags that have a little bit of pop to them because if we're wearing just everything is basic, right? Basic colors, basic cuts. If everything else about what we're wearing is super basic, then we might want to consider a bag with a little bit of character, a little personality, a little pop. 
Now that doesn't mean it has to be like crazy or anything, a wild color or something. Just think about the style of the bag, also the texture. What's the material of the bag? Does it bring a little something, a little bit of interest because it's woven or because it has hardware on the bag that's really visible and easy to see and kind of is a statement in and of itself. It almost acts like jewelry, right? And we talk about juxtaposition a lot, but when it comes to shoes and dressing up something basic, this is one of those areas that I feel is like almost a hidden gem in this idea. And you'll see it in like women wearing like a tailored suit with sneakers. There's something about the juxtaposition that makes it interesting and, and makes it kind of fun um, and different. And it's the same thing. Again, I think we get caught up in thinking that basics have to be something like leggings and a t-shirt when that is certainly not the only basics option. I have started a campaign where I would like for everyone to start to recognize that dress pants these days are just as comfortable as sweatpants. I'm so grateful that so many of the companies have now started coming out with, like I said, dress pants that just feel like sweatpants. They're so comfortable. I can sit and move and do anything in these pants. So instead of wearing leggings and tennis shoes, I might wear a really comfortable pair of dress pants and then a very uh, demure, a very easy to wear slip on kitten heel type shoe. I'm not a big stiletto wearing kind of gal. I'm not super comfortable in heels. I have I've not worn them most of my life. And so kitten heels are some of my favorite because they're still very comfortable, but they really jazz up a very basic look or outfit. Again, thinking about making those little changes, we can still feel very comfortable and wear our basic outfits, but we can jazz them up a little bit and make sure that they still feel feminine. Most women want to look taller. Adding things like a pointed toe heel, a small heel, like a kitten heel, you don't have to have the height from the heel, you can visually bring the height with a pointy shoe, for example. If you know your body type, then this next part is going to be critical. And that is, as I stated, balancing your outfit. If you're choosing to wear something that is oversized, you have to make sure that we have balance. We want proper proportions in the outfit. A great visual representation uh, is to think of our outfit in thirds. We need to be dividing things into thirds. Is it more of a high-waisted pair of pants? So two thirds of your body is pants, and then one third is the top. We have to be careful not to cut ourselves in half. As great of a magic trick as that is, it is not great in fashion and doesn't look good on most people. We need to kind of have things balanced in those thirds. There's lots of different ways to, again, balance out outfits, whether you're wearing wide pants on the bottom, looser, wider pants on the bottom, and then a nice tighter fitting top on top, or vice versa. We can wear something really oversized on top and then something a little more form fitting to straight on the bottom. It doesn't mean it has to be leggings or tight. It can just be a very uh, close to the leg straight pant on the bottom. So there's lots of ways to find that balance depending on your body type, but it's one of the most common culprits when feeling like basics don't look good is because we're not balancing our basics. I hope you found this video helpful. Like I said, if you're unsure still of your body type and you want a little bit of help and direction in that, then head down to the description box and grab that free workbook so that you can be certain of what your body type is. It's going to help you make better decisions about what to purchase and what to wear. And don't forget to check out the Blue Mean Face Pro as well. The link is down below in the description box to get you $150 off. Plus, if you're one of the first 100 people and you use my code Angela, that is going to get you an additional $50 off. The whole thing will be over $200 off. I think you're really going to love it. I love mine. I especially love the new version, the 2.0, and I know that you're going to love it too. That is it for me today, friends. I will see you again very soon.